story, Dark Man, please! Yay! Yeah, there's too much light. My blessed mess forsaken! These fairy tales are close to clean, so dark and dry, a lifeless dream, a warm bleak. I'll craft them dark to make them grim. That's my hallmark. My guts fill up with pretty tales. Their prissy cuteness never fails to make me puke, to lose my wits, to lock my teeth and give me fits. Now the rents is stale and foul, despise the happiest thing. Gross and nasty make me howl, though they may be offending. I care to build true tales of light, of fear and woe bring back the night. I hate dumb luck, a door of tuck, my humble goal is to When a grown man has the gall to blame his dismal prospects on his deceased father and threatens to kill and eat his feline inheritance, he deserves whatever gruesome penalty fate can dish out. The sons of a humble miller divide his possessions before he's barely cold. Let me use your ass to work the mill and I'll share whatever profits may come our way. Gladly. I knew father's ass must be good for Summit. What about our brother? Meow. Let him teach the cat to catch rats for his keep. Oh, great. I hate rats. Not enough white meat. Thanks for nothing, father. Might as well eat the cat and slit me throat on a full stomach. The cat, called Puss, being a far sight more clever than his new master, concocts a scheme to save both their lives. Master, don't despair. Get me a decent pair of boots, and I'll make our living. Really, puss? Okay, great. What size? The cat, forever generous and altruistic, and if you believe that, I'd like to sell you some land in Sanitu, begins to deliver on the first installment of their salvation. Ah, poor bunnies. Ignorant of the pleasures, requirements, and deceits of this world. Come along with me, that you may see the light. <laughs> hmm, this starts to sound fishy. What's he gonna do with all these rabbits? Puss knows just where to redeem this herd of cuddlies. <laughs> I bring you a present, sire, from my master, the Marquis of Carabas. <coughs> a warning of rabbits. How droll. Thank the Marquis and tell him he does me a great deal of pleasure. Oh, brother. Because his master doesn't even know what a Marquis is. Once he sets the hook, Puss plays the deeply loopy king before reeling him in. Oh, Majesty, thank heavens you've passed by. My lord, the Marquis of Carabas, has been robbed of his clothing. Tragic, such a generous man. What luck! The completely senseless Marquis will not have to gather about completely naked. And the princess is quite taken with him also. Puss moves ahead of the carriage so he can further inflate his master's reputation. <laughs> Listen up, you scum! If you do not tell the king that the meadow you mow belongs to the Marquis of Carabas, you shall be chopped as small as herbs for the pot. <laughs> Are you repressing us? Indeed he is. Repressed by a flaming cat in boots by your leave. Rather... Rather. Just shut the hell up and do as I say. Hmm. Very persuasive. What tact. What discretion. A natural diplomat. Good mowers, hail. To whom do these fine meadows belong? Take him, to my lord, lord Marquis of Carabas, your majesty. majesty. 
Pussy's scheme relies on the king's ignorance of his kingdom's geography and people, as well as his willingness to be closely advised by a talking cat in unconventional footwear. And for Pussy's final coup, he stops at a sumptuously decorated, if forbidding, castle, where lives a rich and powerful ogre. I have been assured that you are able to change yourself into a lion or an elephant. Wow. True that. I can become all creatures, great and small. Wow. Wow. <laughs> But surely nothing so tiny as a mouse. That would be impossible. <laughs> Even for one of your great powers. Oh, ye of little faith. <laughs> a decent trick, but exploiting such a creature's vanity is so easy. Not kosher, really, but effective. Welcome, your majesty, to the Carabas family home. A vast and fine abode. And as my daughter appears to have fallen in love with your master, <laughs> it will be his fault if he is not my son-in-law before this day is done. They're purported to have lived happily ever after. I suspect I'm not the first to find something less than satisfying, let alone credible, in a secretly swashbuckling feline. What say we craft a scenario that befits the cunning and courage of the cat? When the old miller kicks off, he leaves his paltry estate, a distressed mill, a dumb donkey, and a tomcat, to his three worthless and mean-spirited sons. There's bound to be foul play afoot. Let's make it fouler. Make it nasty. Do it now!
shit! So secret now, are you? But stomp it. Let's make it gruesome. Make it stinky. Do it now! It's cold to herd. Where's my boomstick? Let's blow it up. Make it nasty. Ow! Oh, 
presents carcasses to the king. The seemingly misguided attempt to garner royal favor works. The king is impressed by deceased legamores. Pretty sick, no? Well, let's make them sicker. Make it nasty. Do it now!
kid. Disgusting. Rump and stump. Bunny would be in the front of my dignity if I had any. To elicit royal sympathy. Puss contrives to have the king believe his master, whose name is Brian, by the way, has been stripped and robbed by highwaymen. Where is this going? Nakedness? Bandits? Oh, what the hell? Let's make it nude banditos. Make it rotten. Do it now!
make it nasty. Don't delay, but stomp away! Short of a fiesta. Right on, senores. Ole! While his master rides with the king, Puss threatens the local farmers. Tell a big lie or perish. <laughs> help! Help! You're being oppressed! Make it gruesome. Do it now! Achieved. Easy choice. They've seen Puss's mouth. And this plan has some teeth, too. Let's make them sharp. Move, beasties.
Dadgummit! Grim level achieved. Dadgummit! Game if he weren't a bean, don't. And I've got underwear more hideous. Let's make him truly revolting. Make it foul. Do it now.
Hardly cryptic. and becomes a lion. Wow. If you'd eat this arrogant and reckless puss, we could close up shop and go home. That'd be too easy, wouldn't it? Make it disgusting. Romping, stomping, butt kicking good. Once again, he transforms, becoming an enormous evil. Hell! 
Wow. Hey, stay the hell out of my stories, you oversized piece of produce. Make it repulsive. The ogre transforms again, this time becoming a mouse. Hey, puss, eat that, you might get covered. Is it such a thing possible? <laughs> What's the deal here? Was she just waiting on the other side of that door with a wedding party for the ogre to be murdered? The moral of the story? Cats are tiny monsters. Their lies, threats, and outright murder are acceptable, nay, desirable means to human happiness and well. Hmm. Wonder where I can get a nice cat. Meow. about the old man's death, and his son's response to it was self-serving and indecent. In the context of this drama, Puss can hardly be blamed for acting like a human. Turns out father's been brutally murdered, and his oldest son has blood on his hands. The mill is mine. I'll use your ass to work it and give you a crust in return. Mm, mm, sounds fair. <laughs> what about him? He could eat cow shit and die. Father said I could eat the cat. Father's dead, and good riddance to the ugly brute. Make sure you're gone today, or I'll put you in the pie. Take that mangy excuse for a throw rug with you. Wow! Puss had no intention of becoming a meal or a muff. <laughs> you, being useless, will understand nearly nothing of what's to happen. Just stay out of the way. Can you manage that? I'm sure. I did procure your boots, and and previously I asked how high when you said jump. Puss cleared the warren of a raft of rabbits. Then he took the whole mess to the king. Deliciously macabre, Monsieur Puss. <laughs> I'll have this stuffed with something post haste. Will you stay for the dinner? <laughs> Delighted, Your Majesty. Uh, is there a box where I might freshen up my toilet? <laughs> Puss perfectly understood the maniac royal's predilection for gore and guts. With the world gone mad and naked, and the bogus marquis coming apart, as it were, Puss had little need to further ingratiate himself into the king's good graces. But he had a story, and he was sticking to it. You'll excuse me for saying so, Master, but I don't believe you resisted those bandits as vigorously as you might have done. Wow. Did I detect yelps of leisure? To the best of my recollection, I was assaulted. Well, do a better job of being miserable. The king will expect it. The king, in fact, was smitten with the cat. What he did for the hapless Marquis was really for Puss's sake. <laughs> This land belongs to the Marquis of Carabas, unless you can answer the following question. <laughs> this is my land. This belongs to Lord Carabas. Is... The rightful owner, correct. Now, the real question is, why do cows have four stomachs? Anyone? <laughs> well, Lord Carabas thanks you for your efforts. You may die now. <laughs> Whoever propagated this notion of good ogres never met one. Nasty bits of work ogres are. Rumors are so unkind, your ogreness. You're purported to be ugly, ornery, vicious, cruel, shapeshifters, execrable table manners too, no personal hygiene to speak of. Wow. That's your ogre, I was told. Well, I won't deny it all. It's a cruel description, but fair. And the shape-shifting? <laughs> oh yeah, that's all good. Pretty impressive, really. That's very nice, your magnificence. Outstanding! <laughs> the elephant was brilliant, but 
What would really move me is if you could become a mouse. They are such frightening, resourceful creatures. But no, that would be too much to ask. <laughs> In my previous description of the ogre, I omitted dumb, egregious oversight. Include it now. It's a defining characteristic. Now to celebrate multiple murders, massive deceptions, grievous bodily harm, gross assaults on bodies and minds. A wedding. Oh, these characters deserve one another. <laughs> yeah. May all our stories end so well. Until next time. Meow.